Hey ho, this is another video in my series I call Reading Old Newspapers. Okay, basically what it is is, wait one second, I have to say that my video audio, my video audio, my recording, the audio breaks up and skips sometimes. So when that happens, sorry, I, I can't do anything about it and I still post it. So if it happens, I'm sorry. Let's hope it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. I read old newspapers from newspapers.com, basically. Okay. My internet speed is slowed down for some reason. It was slow, always really slow already, but it's even slower. So I might have to... I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Okay. Whoops. Here we go. Okay, Canada. Let's do Canada. Let's do Quebec. Montreal, let's do Montreal. Okay, hopefully it's in English. Montreal Gazette. Ooh, 1700s, wow, that's old. 1790 we'll do. And it's May, so we'll do May. Thursdays only. May 20th we'll do. Four pages. <laughs> they might take forever to load because my internet is slow as can be. Let's hope for the best here. Oh, free trial. I don't know what that is, but forget it. Forget about that. What the heck? Oh, uh, can't get it. Why not? For some reason, they're not letting me... The Montreal Star, let's try. Ooh, look at this. Look at how old it is. 1875, we'll try. May. Ooh, lots of days here. May 20th, let's try. Well, let's do a Friday. Four pages. Will it load? Waiting it, waiting for it to load. Waiting for it to load. I thought I'd switch screens. And yeah, my internet's so slow today. It's, it's crazy. I can listen to music and it has no effect. But video, downloading video, not downloading, streaming videos or downloading images, it's awful. Oh, I know what the problem is. Sorry, guys. I have to sign in. I, I already Usually it's already signed in, but because I haven't used it for a little while, they say that I don't have the subscription. But I got full subscription. I paid for the extra premium, so I get... Okay. Wow, this is taking forever. Sorry about that. Okay, I'm in. Okay, let's go back to Montreal Gazette then. And we want 1771. What was it that we wanted? 1790, let's try. May. Oops, April I hit. May, let's do. May 20th. Bye. That's because I was signed out. I was signed out from my account. 
Is it in French? If it's in French, I'm screwed. Yeah. Or is it in French and English? Is it in French and English? <laughs> yeah, it's still downloading. It's so like it's so slow to download that it downloads like a blurred image and then it's it slowly uh what do you call that? Gets better uh resolution. Okay, it's French and English. <laughs> That's interesting. They have a French side and an English side. Still downloading. I've wasted like 10 minutes now. Okay, let's see this. Montreal Gazette. An act or ordinance passed 12th April 1790 to amend an act or ordinance for preventing accidents by fire passed path in the 17th year of this of his majest, majesty's reign. Whereas, by an ordinance of this province, passed in the 17th year of His Majesty's reign, entitled An Ordinance to Prevent Accidents by Fire, it is amongst the other things enacted that the overfear fears of chimneys foul, fail, cough, every chimney made of of in the towns of what's this it has that weird letter and for burrs of the towns in which they are over seers i'm going to assume that's an app an s it looks like an f but it's an s really to be sweeped and scraped at as at, at high as possible yeah it's an s once it ever once in every month and shall receive six pence from the occupier of the house to which such chimney belongs for each chimney to sweep swept and whereas favored poor inhabitants occupiers of apartments in the, the small house houses of the suburbs of St. Rock, which represented their inability to pay the charge here aforesaid, for the relief of all such poor, be it enacted by His Excellency the Governor of the Legislature Council, Legislative Council, and it is hereby enacted by the authority of the same, of that from and after the publication of this ordinance, if any overseer of chimneys in the province, while in the receipt of an allowance from the governor government thereof for sweeping the chimneys of the poor gratis, shall take or receive or cause to be taken, received by any person there forever. Whatsoever, any reward or emolument for sweeping the chimney of any poor occupier of any small house or apartment in the towns or suburbs thereof, if such poor person shall produce to the said overseer or to his agent or sweepers a certificate of his poverty signed by any curate or minister or by the magistrate of the town or parish 
of which he is ordinarily in inhabitants. Every such overseer and his agent shall incur a, a fine of five shillings for each such offense, one half of his magistri majesty, and the other half to the use of the poor person or any other person who shall prosecute for the same any act, regulation, or authority to the contrary there notwithstanding. And be it further enacted by the same authority that, that after the publication of this ordinance it shall not be lawful for any overseer of chimneys to take or receive more than three pence for sweeping or causing to be swept any chimney in any house in the suburbs of the town of Quebec or Montreal which in the height does not exceed the ground floor which in height does not exceed a, a ground floor or garrets or to insist on sweeping the same more than once in two months if the pr proprietor or occupier does not acquire acquiesce therein any law regulation or authority to the contrary notwithstanding and to be enacted by the same authority same authority that all fines and forfeit forfeitures that shall be incurred in virtue in vir, virtue of this ordinance shall be fined for the recovering in the, the same time in the same manner with the same right of appeal as if occur, uh, incurred under the ordinance above recited of which no par part is to be confused at, or as altered or changed other than as it in this ordinance expers or set forth ex exper exper expresided or set forth I don't know what I just read there it sounds like they're making sure that that the poor people get their chimney sweep swept a certificate of his poverty signed by the curate or minister I guess the poor have the right to get their chimneys swept is what it is, it is right okay page two Okay. Whoa, this is in French. This part's in French. Oh, there it is. Takes forever to load. See how blurry it is? They have the F. Is It looks like an F, but it's an S. That's weird. Is it because of the typeface of some sort? I think back in the old days, they didn't have S's? Nothing important here, really.
What's this? All persons indebted to the estate of Atine, Atine, Governor, Governo, Governo, late merchant of Saint Anton, or requ requ requested to settle with the subscriber as ex ex executors at the house of the deceased before the 20th May next, after which period those not complying must be prosecuted according to law. Also, if persons having claims on the estate afore, aforesaid are desired to give them in without delay, duly attested to Louis Mer Marchand, uh, one of the subscribers, at the house of the deceased, or to Matthew Limburner, one of the subscribers at his house at Quebec. Somebody die, I guess. No, I don't think anybody died. I think they just want their money for some reason. Huh. Okay, next page. Page is all in French. It's not. It's no good. Okay, next page. Unless you want me to try to speak French, read French, I wouldn't even know what I'm reading. Okay, next page. I think that's it for pages. Okay, that's a load. Come on, load. <sighs> Here we go. Gotta load, gotta load, as blurry as can be. Whoops. My mouse is very sensitive. The left and right clickers. buttons or whatever it is. Click left, click right. Just a little bit of a touch on it and a click. Okay, what's up with you? I went to Falls U Casino. Just uh, it's in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. Lost money two days of playing. Lost both days. Sucks. That really sucks. But then when I came back, I played another day on Sunday at my regular casino. I made $200. I made some money back, which was nice. Um, yeah. And I plan on going again. Today is Wednesday. I want to go back. I go once a month. Or once a week. So I'm going to go back on Saturday, I think. It's a nice day. 
what I do is I ride my motorbike. That's partially why I want to go, because it gives me somewhere to ride my motorbike. And yeah, that's fun. And then I play a little poker, ride my motorbike back, have some fun. Here we go. English on one side. Ooh. A lot of French. Mostly French. J.A. Gray, auctioneer and broker. Begs, begs leave to return his numerous friends and the public in general sincere acknowledgement for the many favors already concurred, conferred upon him at the fame time, same time as Slatters himself. Slatters himself? Satters himself, that his care and attention to their concerns will merit a continuance. He now takes the liberty to acquaint them to that them that he is removed from his late stores in St. Paul's Street to the spacious house and stores in J Joseph Street next to the Grand Parade. Lately, uh, lately occupied by Mr. John Grant, where he has for sale on the most reasonable terms for ready money, a complete and general assortment of dry goods, also a variety of other articles. I don't know. Oh, Let's see, South Port, Southampton Port Wine, White Port, Claire, Claret, Sherry, French White Wine, Frontenac, Ditto in Kegs, a few barrels of fine flour, American Cheese, Pigtail Tobacco, Chocolate, White and Yellow Soap, Mold and Dips, Candles, Sheet, iron, etc., etc. Mm. Okay, that's pretty much it on them. Okay, let's head back. That's it. I don't think there's another page. I'm going to double check. Let's double check. No, no other page. Oh, downloading takes forever. Okay, we're back. Montreal Gazette. Let's take something early, um, closer to. Not as old. Closest one is 1868. We'll do 1866 just for the heck of it. May. May, let's say, let's Saturday, let's say 26. Four pages. No photos. Because it's all print, right? The old printing press in those days. Montreal Gazette. Very fine, eh? It's all advertisements. Life insurance. Railway. Ottawa Railway. Doesn't have prices.
right here. Okay, let's see what here. British Colonial, Colon Colonial Streamship Company. Let's see what it has to say. Oh shoot. What's it say? The company first class powerful something steam ship St. Lawrence 1378 Tuesday register oh 1376 tons register John James commander is intended to be dispatched from Quebec for London on Thursday the 24th May to be be followed on the instant to be followed on the 26th instant by the SS Ottawa F Archer commander cabin passage from Quebec to London $60 Oh, the weekly steam weekly by between Montreal and Liverpool via New York calling at Queenstown Cork Cork Harbor Ireland sailing to sailing at no between Montreal and Liverpool via New York sailing maybe that's sailing Through, through tickets from Montreal via New York, the Liverpool, New York, and Philadelphia Steamship Company Steamships, the Undernote and others sail as follow. From New York to Liverpool, City of London, Saturday, May 5th, City of Washington, Saturday, May 12th, City of Paris, Saturday, May 19th, City of New York, Saturday, May 26. Rate of passenger passage from Montreal. Cabin, first cabin to Queenstown to Liverpool, $95 it looks like. And then to London, it's $100. To uh, Paris, with privilege of stopping in Liverpool or London, $110. <coughs> Children between 1 and 12 years old, half fare. Infants under 1 years old, free, it looks like. <coughs> hmm. That's interesting. Fire insurance. Marine insurance. Offers for sale in bottle, champagnes, li liquors, and cordials, cordials, wines, calories, brandy, ale, stout, schnapps, gin. <laughs> right there. A bunch of sales. Okay, let's go to the next page. A lot of writing. New books. Oh, 
What did I see here? What is this? New box. What's this? The Church of Eng Old England, a monthly magazine devoted to the interests of the Church of Canada and advancement of education and temperance. John Painter McMillan, sole editor and prop proprietor, Montreal, printed for the proprietor by M. Long Longmore and Company. 97 Great Street, James Street. Great St. James Street. We have received the May number of this month monthly. In answer answers the description we gave of its predecessor. We see it in the, it the following church notices. The Lord Bishop of this diocese purpose DV to hold a general or ordination at St. Andrews on 27th Inst Institute Inst Institute being Trinity Sunday the candidates for deacon orders whose names have been accepted by the British, British uh, B Bishop are okay whatever I thought it was new reading new books has nothing to do with new books. <laughs> Think it is. I don't know what this is. The steam blower explosion. That sounds interesting. Let's see here. Right here. Yesterday afternoon at 3 o'clock, the coroner's jury again assembled for the purpose of continuing the investigation into the explosion of the boiler on, on board the steamboat Lion. The coroner announced that he had been visited by the four men who were injured by the explosion and were to be have to have given their testimony. Irwin, however, was lying sick and could not be seen till Monday. Captain Lee could not be seen till Tuesday, while Hood, who was in Mr. White's employ, was growing weaker. Mom Petit, who was lying in the hotel Do Deo Dio, was able to come down on Monday. His wife was almost also much injured. Mom Petit stated that the deckhand and a barge man were still missing. Two of the other men, Lefebvre and Malay, were also very low. It was also announced that the boat was now on the beach and that if the injured thought proper to visit it, it they could do so that afternoon as there were no witnesses ready. It was finally resolved that the jury, sh the jury should visit the boat immediately Mr. McGinn, 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 I guess, suggesting that Mr. Brush and Mr. Pheasant, Pheasanton should also inspect it. It was also resolved that after inspecting the boat and portions of the boiler, 
the jury should proceed to the house of Mr. Hood in order that his evidence should be taken. The jury then proceeded down to Hakalada, Hakalaga, where the boat was found hauled up on the beach and for forward part of the hull being a complete wreck. Mr. Fezenden, inspector of steamboats, was present and with several of the injured men, men who were practical engineers examined the firebox as well as portions of the firebox crown which had been forced in by the pressure of the steam. The fracture on each side being at the termination of the T-bars or strengthening ribs or stays riveted across the firebox. The impression was that the workmanship was good, the question being as to the sufficiency of the staying of the firebox. Certain measurements were taken, which, together with the evidence of practical men, with doubtless lend to correct data on the subject. Do will do. Uh, I don't know what this is. Doubtless will doubtless lead. Doubtless lead to correct data on the subject. On their return, the jury proceeded to re resident of Mr. Hood. Thomas Hood sworn, I am engineer and finisher. I have read in Montreal, I've resided in Montreal for some years, and have worked with for Mr. White since last fall. The boiler built in Mr. White's for the steamboat Lion was for Monsieur Stanish. It was placed on board the Lion in the month of April last. I was on board the boat Lion on the 17th of the month of May instant, and it was at the request of Mr. Stanish that I remain on the boat for, for her trial trip. It was to put in a blow-off tube and to put, put two stays to the boiler to keep it steady in the cause, case the boat might roll. When we left the canal, the pump attach, attached to the engine was not in working order. The stays were put on as required to steady the boiler. They call them rolling stays. Rolling stays? Uh -huh. The boiler was filled by a band pump, a hand pump, and there was sufficient water in the boiler when she left the canal. There was no water but in the boiler there was no water but in the boiler by the hand pump until the steam was let off at Hachilaga, where she was moored. About two hours had elapsed between the time the steam was let off until the water was put in by the hand pump. The fires were allowed to die out. There were three gauges of gauges? gauges of water in the boiler before the fire was relit. To the best of my knowledge, the engines made two evolutions back and for back and half of one forward when the explosion took place. After the fires were relit, we started about half an hour afterwards or less. The safety valves was in good working order going down but I took no notice of the it after we arrived in whole Chilaga. My impression in that no person to some touched the safety valve. It was blown off steam, blowing off steam a few minutes before we started. The weight was seven by ten. It was about three inches from the end of the lever. I did not see the safety valve for about 20 to 25 minutes from the explosion. After the time of the explosion, I saw I was standing at the wheel house speaking to Laroque. 
I assisted in building the boiler and my opinion is the boiler was good the material good and made in good order there was a remark made when the steamer was set up that the boiler was an exceptional 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 one I have seen a good many boilers and I have not seen any leak as little as this one did I cannot give any idea as to the cause of the explosion. As a practical mechanic, I say that the boiler was properly stayed. The gauge was put on by some plumber. I did not know who it was. The boiler group steam was very fast. Oh, the boiler got up to steam up steam very fast. The water getting low in the boiler was the cause was the cause we put in into was the cause we put into Ho Chalaga half an hour escape between the time we filled the boiler with water and the explosion when we left the canal we only we had only two water gauges Con consequently we had to stop to put in more water the crew were all sober I cannot I cannot something who had charge of the boat. Oh, I would, cannot say who had charge of the boat. Mr. Irwin and his son had charge of the engine. I saw no signs of foaming either some going down or starting. The inquest was then adjourned until Monday at three o'clock. Whoa. Okay. Well, the blur, the, the, the I don't know how they're gonna figure out how it exploded. Okay, let's check the next page. The boiler blew. It happens, eh? Gotta wait for it to load. Whew. Morning report. No, nah. this looks interesting. Commercial though. Commercial crisis. The commercial crisis. Great excitement in London. London, Friday evening, May 11th. The article of the Express newspaper says that a temporary suspension of the Bank Act will be preferred to the issue of the stimulated amount of notes of a stimu stipulated amount of notes the same paper says it is reported that the chancellor of the ex checker ex checker i've never heard that word came into the city and went to the bank of london i guess london england england when excitement throughout the city has been most intense, the streets in which the great banking house is situated are situated have been full of excited crowds. The run on some of the banks was heavy, but it was well met, and up to four o'clock no further suspension had been announced, and the feeling that evening at the close of the markets at five o'clock was decidedly more favorable. Consula, consoles close 85 x divided markets good all around over ends 11 and a half to 10 and a half dias this I don't know what this imperial 10 9 oh that's probably like 
stock things. The monetary crisis having vitally, virtually stopped operations of all the principal markets. The, the report generally circulated on the best authority that the bank would issue additional notes is stated to be as yet without official confirmation. It is stated that the bank has decided to make advances upon stock at the rate of 10%. Up to 8, 8 p.m. there w was still considerable excitement. The suspension of an imminent railway con contract contractor was announced and two small stockbrokers have, fa have fall failed but on the whole there is a decided better feeling. The firm, the firm belief that the bank will be authorized to issue notes had material effect in restoring confidence and the fact that several banks upon which there was a uh, Benny? Benny Run of what? I don't know what that word is. Benny? Run were enabled to meet it promptly, also had great effect. There's, there's, I don't know what that is. There's a run on the bank, it sounded like. But they squashed it by adding notes. Okay, this is a long video because I because I screwed up the beginning. Okay, let's go to the last page here. I am not smart. I don't know what I'm reading. I read it, but I don't know. Okay, let's read this little poem here. They don't do that in nowadays. Okay, let's see here. The seabird. Deep mist. Tie, lie heavy on the deep, dark ocean. Cold winds come, faintly breathed from mother's seas. With long swinging swell, a lazy motion doth the old sea roll to the steady breeze. I'm not reading it right, but silent the gloom. As when or new creation, the no, I can't read it moved of old with violent with voice. I can't read it. Lonesome were all seems black, black desolation. On the long waves, asleep sea birds wing. A sleeping sea birds wing. Through the dark mist comes, looming up, the steamer, rushing right toward in her steadfast course. Here, vast and strange, so be a troubled dreamer, come while he sleeps, a vision of remorse. Now through the air while wild cries of men despairing, wild sobs, sobs of women in their agony. I'm not reading this right. Means, wails, fierce shrieks, the startling seagull soaring, pierce the thick clouds and reach the blue calm sky. That blue above, that deep 
unfathomed glory receives the voice voices nor returns of sound that dread deep chronic chronicle of song and story the solemn listener ail the earth around hear the wild wall the story of disaster <coughs> <laughs> and smiles as brightly as it's a mild of old. The seabird circling madly, fast and something. Bees from above, the sunset gleams of gold. Deep sudden silence on the ocean falleth. Sail solemn more solemn for that long sad cry where with a dying woman wildly cometh far the fond clasp whereas wherein she longed to die but calleth va vainly in the gathering twilight vainly her white arms upward near it something she blue closed the ways above that gloomy eye light night cometh down with silence on the sea night cometh down dark night and cold and lone and lonely lonesome the winds that o'er the hushed men hushed sea sweep on the long waves, the silent seabird only, rocked to his rest, sits swinging in his sleep. I did not read that well, and that was a piece of junk. I, I, I totally butchered it. Okay, that's a long video because I screwed up at the beginning. I screwed up for the last five minutes. Okay, that's enough of that. That was one of my worst videos I made. Sheesh. I couldn't read it very well, and I'm trying to read that poem. It's like, and the 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 text is like all blurry and stuff. Okay, that's the video. Signing off. Remember, live your life and see what happens. Okay, later.